Hello, and welcome back to Reading Simulator 2017. And by that, of course, I mean the Kaiserreich mod for Hearts of Iron 4, our Japan playthrough. Thank you for watching. All right, and without further ado, let's get started. Recturationist officers were the main participants of the coup that overthrew the elected government, for they saw the parliamentary system as a plutocratic capitalist institution. However, under the successive government, the centralists took the leading role in the new regime, and the reactionists were marginalized by the leadership. The reactionist leadership has concluded that they were deceived. A new power struggle has begun. Will this ever end? So, you know, the military has its own factions. Shizuka. Alright, let's get started. Oh, and let's, uh, let's go to military cent centralism, which will be the reactionists who will do another coup attempt. So it's going to be a coup of the coup. And then, let's see, we have troops that need to be assigned to here. And then, let's see what our deployment looks like. Let's see if we build up too quick. Because we do have 1.9 million people to put in our armies. So we want to be building as fast as possible. Crisis on the Danube. Alright. Uh, despite the victory in the Welt Krieg, the Austro-Hungarian Empire appeared to be bound to collapse. The Augsleich of 1927, negotiated when Emperor Otto was still a child, managed to preserve it, though, via granting extensive rights to most of the minorities of the empire. However, the Hungarians were angered by this fact and sought to establish a dominating position in the empire, while the Habsburgs were still interested in retaining that role. Many put high hopes on the Augsleich of 1937 to preserve the monarchy, but it appears that all d diplomacy has failed. Hungary and Austria have separated and even gone into conflict with one another, a war that is bound to affect any and all autonomous territories of the empire. Europe is never going to be calm. And the Austrian Empire declares war on Hungary. And let's see what the conflict looks like. So Hungary has 17, well, more like 15 troops, and the Austrians have like 23 or something. But th what will happen, usually, is that the Italian Federation will go to war with the Austrians um, to take back their um, Trentino, Fiuli, and Istria, and Trieste. And then Austria will also go to war with all these miners who they want to conquer back. But then the Iron Guard of Romania, as soon as the Hungary starts to look to win, the Iron Guard of Romania will usually, and I say this usually, like an asterisk, um, will then attack Hungary from behind and take this portion of them. And that will cause the Hungarians to collapse. Alright, so now, now that you know my experience in this game, let's uh, take our troops, continue putting, deploying them, and let's, uh, let's add a unit or two. And start up. Italian Federation, see, the Italian Federation has declared war, and the Austrian Empire has declared war on Montenegro. The Iron Guard of Romania has stabbed Hungary in the back, as expected. And Serbia has declared war on Comindian of Bosnia Herzegovina. I think I terribly mangled that one, but whatever. Okay, military centralism. Earlier today, restorationist junior officers from units in the Tokyo area have staged a coup d'etat. In the early morning, 1,400 officers and enlisted soldiers embarked on a mission to seize control of key communications and administrative facilities. The Army Ministry, the General Staff Office, the Metropolitan Police Quarters, and the Prime Minister's official residence, and the Imperial Diet Building were all quickly captured, and the Imperial Palace went under siege. After the Emperor explicitly denounced the putschists, the Navy mobilized the Marine Divisions to rescue the palace, and by the evening, the coup was crushed. Crushed. Oh, no. Political power minus 60 gets the events of the centralist win. The purge of Ishinha will proceed. Thank God for the Navy. What? So what's going to happen now? Okay, so the centralists won. Oh, okay, so this is all happening because we chose the centralists earlier, I think. So that means that the centralists won, but we still had a military centralism, so that's good. So now p political a political blueprint gets events the fun on the fundamental principles of the national structure. 21 days, let's get started. Meanwhile, we are slowly regaining our political power. Downfall and stability, that's gonna happen. 
Okay. The Centralists win. So these these are the paternal autocrats who paternal autocrat paternal autocrat national populists and national populists. We really want to change this guy. Um, okay. The Restorationist coup has been defeated. Branded traitors, the restor Restorationists are being purged all over the country. There are calls for the army to assume a greater role in government to help root out both the traitors and the syndicalists. Army Minister ha Hayashi will assume the premiership. So the head of government changes to paternal autocrats, old general. Okay, I'm okay with that. Foreign minister turns to paternal autocrats, paternal autocrats, and paternal autocrats. And it looks like they're all good. Yeah. So yes, Hinamura can stay. No, we will change. So now we have all paternal autocrats. And except for the local manpower minus 20%, we have pretty good leaders now. Justify war goal time, max planning, army experience. All right, let's get started. We're getting political movement pretty quick. Conscription bonus, recruitable population, 2.5. And for the empire, it's a cool symbol. Hungary and our government have signed a white peace, so it looks like usually when it says a right pe white peace, it actually means one one side has won, and it looks like Romania has won and taken Transylvania. So that's been taken. Just a lot of good land, and uh, Austria looks to be winning barely, but I wouldn't be surprised as soon as Italy pieces out with Austria, I think that they will. Austria will start winning again, because right now they're fighting a two-front war. Alright, let's get started again. Political blueprint. Okay, let's do... I think we need to do all these, so let's see. National Total Mobilization Ordinance. Oh, we should have read this. After our assumption of power, we are expected to draw out a national political plan refle reflecting our military ideology. In the following weeks, the Supreme Military Council will be meeting to discuss the, such a document. Alright. The National Total Mobilization Ordinance, which will give us supply consumption minus 10%, daily political power plus 0.2, that's pretty good. And factory output plus 10%, production efficiency cap plus 5%, or fund the adjustment or ordinance, which will give us consumer goods factories minus 10%, construction speed plus 10%, and recruited population 5%, Division recovery rate plus 7%, division training time minus 0.1. We're definitely doing this side first for the uh, increased construction speed. Sardom restored. The Russian Republic has gone fastest, basically. But anyway, the Russian Republic, created in the last years of the Welt Krieg, appears to only have lasted 20 years before its end. Plagued by disorder, conflict, and ineffective governments, the Republic lost the support of the people, and Russian agencies now report that a successor of Nicholas II has been finally coronated as the new Tsar of the nation. While it's not known how different the international stance of this reborn Russian Empire will be, or even the coronation of the Tsar will have any effect in the saving of the country, numerous monarchies across the world are already congratulating the, the Romanova on regaining their divine birthright. One more democracy erased forever. So let's see. The Russian Empire, and they went down. Crown Dmitry as the new Tsar. Invite the legitimate Tsar. Hmm. Interesting. So now they're going to go down this tree. Alright, let's get started again. Serbia took one state, as usually happens. Serbia won. So they've expanded, but Austria will usually swoop in and take Serbia eventually. Okay, let's see how our troops are going. They're building pretty well. What we don't want is any, at any time, the Kingdom of Croatia has been annexed by Austria, right? We don't want any, at any time, for these to be full and these to be just going up slowly. So let's watch and see. And Hungary was annexed, all right.
And it looks like we're going to have to add a couple more units. So let's go to 10. Okay. The end of American democracy. Surprisingly, news have arrived from the United States of America today. President Her Herbert Hoover, whose administrative has proven to be unable to stabilize, incapable of stabilizing the defend, dividing country, calming down the CSA and AFP militants, has invited General Douglas MacArthur, MacArthur to take the reins of the country with a junta of military men and corporate representatives. President MacArthur, MacArthur is a strong proponent of the Iron Fist rule and opposes both syndicalism and American pacifism. Large-scale crackdowns on the enemies of America have already been reported. Troubling. So I think that that should have not happened because it is no it is so because Huey Long became part of the became president and then I guess he invited uh Mako here to be president or whatever he's called now but because of that the south has not rebelled which means that they're gonna basically crush the syndicalists and probably the uh, Pacific states as well. They have zero troops. Oh, well, they'll get some eventually. But, all right, uh, let's look at uh, Austria. So Austria has annexed the part of Hungary that they could. They're still at war with these two countries and Montenegro, but that won't take long. And they're still fighting off Italy. So maybe this will be a game where Italy gets crushed by the Austrians. We'll see. All right. Combined Syndicalists of America declared war on the United States, as expected. The United States in disarray. The United States has declared war on the American Union state. Oh, so it didn't actually. That is strange. The Civil War has erupted in the United States, tearing apart the last shreds of unity of the Union. This presents to us a chance to remove American presence in the Central Pacific by occupying the island of Guam. There is very little that the U.S. government can do to stop us at this point. Yeah. Of course we're going to seize Guam. So let's see where that is. Is that this little... No, that's Wake Island. Where is Guam? I should know this. This is... Nope. Not Guam. Ah, okay. Found it. Alright, so let's... uh, Let's go to guards. And they will garrison area. Guam as well. Okay. Uh, let's exit out of here. Okay. The Second American Civil War. The, to uneducated foreigners, it might seem like the crisis of the United States happened out of nowhere. But experts agree that this was a civil war years in the making. Ever since the collapse of the New York Stock Exchange in 1929, the economy of the United States has been in constant downturn. Now, United States, the United States has devolved into a three-way civil war between the loyalists of the old government, the syndicalist combined syndicates of America, and the conservative and xenophobic American Union states. There have already been reports of arriving volunteers from Europe to fight for a faction that they're liking. The Second American Civil War might just be the first of many battlefields between the great powers of this world in this tough time for humanity. A troublesome development. So let's see. So the American Union State did break away. I'm very confused because Huey Long became President of the United States. So I thought that he'd just become President and then take over the Syndicalists. But, and then it looks like New England broke off and then immediately became part of Canada. So Canada is very much, very strong now. Hmm. New York is like its own separate little state. New York State. Hmm. Well, anyway, so Canada is getting to be strong in this game. Alright. Let's go back to being us. We're not really worried about the Americas for now. Found the adjustment ordinance. is passed. Let's do military training curriculum. Recruitable population of 5% will be very nice. Military training was first introduced into the compulsory physical education curriculum in 1925 by the Tanaka regime as a way to subdue growing anti-militarist influence and discontent among students. It was discontinued with the constitutional restoration of 1926, but it is time to reverse that decision. Yes. American Union State has gone to war with syndicalists. And I would not be surprised if the Pacific, Pacific States join in. Syndicalist uprising in Manila. Not seeing it, but the Philippines have peacefully achieved independence from the United States due to the chaotic U.S. Civil War. Their young commonwealth is already facing the dangers of the syndicalism. Inspired by both the combined syndicalist uprising in America and by the Bahartarian 
Bharatian commune in India, a group of disgruntled army officers has o have ordered their units to march toward Manila, where they have joined forces with bands of peasants and industri industrial workers. They are planning to establish a socialist republic on the Philippines archipelago. And then if I remember correctly, this is just going to get immediately squashed. Well, that's what usually happens, at least. Democracy fails. As the armed forces declared their support of the old Filipino government, the rebellious units quickly lost support after one of the generals drove an armored column down towards downtown Manila. The syndicalists officially surrendered, ending the threat of a left-wing coup in the Philippines once and for all. And so it shall be. Because they will be ours, eventually. Okay, let's go to there. Pacific States of America declared war on the United States, and then the Carlix Kingdom of Spain declared war on the Kingdom of Spain. Okay, so now the Spanish Civil War is going on as well. Political and social development of the United States has devolved into civil war. This presents us with a unique chance to significantly weaken our potential enemy, the United States, by supporting the rebellious Western states. Send the volunteers to the Pacific States of America. Yeah, sure. We have plenty of manpower. United States and Pacific States of America have signed a white peace. And they probably took a bunch of states. Yep. Took a bunch. Took Nevada, Idaho, and yeah, that's it. They took Nevada and Idaho. So the American, the uh, United States of America is terribly in trouble now. Spanish Civil War. Ever since the defeat of Napoleon, Spain has been plagued by violence, dissent, and turmoil, but it appears that these tensions have reached a breaking point. That is, the Spanish Kingdom has been ripped apart by a three-sided war between numerous factions, the loyalists of the Madrid government, the supporters of the pretenders Javier, and finally the anarcho-syndicalist party known as the CNT-FAI. There are already numerous reports of volunteers and equipment being shipped to Spain from all over the world to support one faction over another. It can safely be said that the fields and mountains of Spain will be the first battlefield of a much wider conflict between the left and the right. Troublesome development. So let's see what's going on over there. So it's a three-part civil war with the Carlist Kingdom and the Federacion Cuesta Iberica. Hmm. Anyway, it's the Catalan parts of Spain that are social syndicalist. I wonder if that is any historical precedent. Okay. We have the new tank, so let's get that going. The Hago. And then let's start researching. So 1939. Cannot do that. I'm 1937, so let's put that. Hmm. We're already doing that. It's almost, no, it's not even close to 1938. And we're already getting... No, we're not doing all of them. So let's go get concentrated into Siege 2. And the Carlos Kingdom of Spain just took 11 states. Okay. So that's strange. I don't know how that happened. But uh, that means that you have 20 troops or so. And you have like 30. So your CNT, FAI are probably going to win this one. Construction 2, and let's get machine tools, improved machine tools, for that production efficiency cap. Military training curriculum, alright. And now let's get the National Total Mobilization Ordinance, gain, uh, let's read it. The National Total Mobilization Ordinance is designed to provide this, the government with a means to control and mobilize all resources and manpower available to the, in the Empire. During wartime, we will have a full control over the labor supply, production of goods, financial interaction, industrial and labor organizations, prices, and the press. So supply consumption and daily political power gain. Very good. And only 35 days. Alright. And let's put you over here. So now we're up to 40 men in our attack force. Do we have someone on Guam? No. So maybe we should build some guards. Uh, it's okay. Do we own this as a core state? We do. Hmm. The foundation of the Belgrade Pact. Serbia, Romania, and Greece, the three Balkan members of the Entente, 
all have adventurous views of their own. I've recently gathered to a common table of negotiations and recently announced the beginning of the Belgrade Pact. With this pact, while this pact puts a lot of focus on cultural dis discussion and preserving Balkan identities, it also it is also a military alliance between the participants, seemingly directed at the country separating them and holding their ancestral lands. This is a new development is a big thorn in Bulgarian domination of the Balkans, but only the incoming reaction of the other great central powers of the other central powers can determine whether it will yield any fruit. Hopefully the Balkans won't start another world war. Well they won't, but France will, probably. Let's go and add you. And we have another one. We are producing troops like no one's business. It's good. And we got another one. Let's just let them build up for a little bit. It'll be okay. Austrian Empire took four states from Kingdom of Galicia Lodomeria. Okay. So now they are just fighting, I believe, the Kingdom of Bohemia. Nope, they are just... They have a non-aggression pact with them. Huh. So maybe the Austrians let them go free? Okay, we took the ordinance. Now let's go and take the National Service Draft Ordinance. The National Service Draft Ordinance is a su supplement to the earlier National Total Mobilization Ordinance, particularly its Article 4, which has enabled the government to mobilize the labor force. The new ordinance author authorizes the government to conscript workers for war industries. Factory output plus 10% and production efficiency clap plus 5%. That is pretty overpowered. Okay, let's take you guys. Actually, let's uh, go and take mobile defense. All infantry and motorized mech get defense plus 20%. Very good. Carrier primacy. So let's go and get carrier organization up even more. Carry task forces. Put them there. Ooh, the fourth Balkan War. Balkan War. A country was reborn in the Balkans after the Wild Krieg, Greater Bulgaria, the titan of the peninsula, uniting all Bulgarian lands and beyond. This kingdom for all Bulgarians was born with bloodshed and war, though. Defeating Serbia, Greece, and Romania in the Wild Krieg, I believe that these three nations are still bitter about today. This tension led to the formation of the Belgrade Pact, and this alliance of the Balkan state has now declared war on the Tsardom, throwing the region into conflict yet again. Will Tsar Boris III save his nation from, his over from this overwhelming force, or will his kingdom be divided once more? This is why I think Bulgaria will be a fun play one to play as well. What's with the Balkans at war all the time? Serbia declares war on the Tsardom of Bulgaria. And they signed a white peace. Let me guess. Bulgaria is wrecked. Nope. Serbia didn't even like... Huh. They didn't even demilitarize. Hmm. The Japanese nation is strong, so our stability has increased as our political power has grown. I cannot wait to take China and attack the Germans. All right. And the next one, 42 days long, one corporate state. Gains national spirit, a corporate state, which grants national unity plus 10%. Nice. The time has finally come to transform Japan into a unified, strong corporate state where every individual does his part for the good of the nation and the motherland. All right. Can we even do the, uh, we can do the Rising Sun now, so let's start getting that done as soon as we're done with this political stuff. The Italian Federation and the Austrian Empire have reached peace, because this is the the industry type stuff and that just I really do want as soon as possible. Alright, let's see. Yep, so Italy took back most of its land, except for Trentino. Our popularity is rising. Paternal autocrats. Since I guess we're going to be paternal autocrats for the rest of the game, it would probably be a good idea. Let's do it. Maybe once in a while, just put these troops on the border. 
We now have 47 men in our attack force. Pretty good. We don't have enough army experience to even put them on the right spot though. I mean, give them artillery. Extra artillery. Because I believe they already have regular artillery. Yes, support artillery. But we want to add some artillery here and then some tanks here. One corporate state. Okay. Now we're going to go the nationalization policy, which gives us civilian to military factories conversion cost, military to civilian factory conversion cost, but then most importantly, factory output plus 10%. For too long, the Zaibatsu and foreign imperialists have raped and exploited our people in favor of their personal profit. Let us take control of the economy and nationalize the industry for the good of all Japan. All right. Speaking of which, what are we building now? Some more civilian factories. So let's get one more here and two here. And then we'll start building maybe some um, infrastructure. Hmm. We really want some military factories though. Let's build up the infrastructure in Tokai and Koshin and uh, let's go with Kanto because it already has some help and then we'll build military factories there. I don't know if it's actually faster to do it this way but we'll see. We'll do it anyway. All right um, we are still in October so let's get some re extraction. Okay, let's go over here. And I think we're going to cap it at 10. Oh, we do have 5 million people. Dang. So maybe we could get some. So let's, uh, let's add it. Let's go up to 15. Maybe that's too much. Yeah, that's too much. Let's just go up to, like, yeah, let's just stay at 10. It's good enough. His Imperial Majesty Hirohito has been shot by radical syndicalists. Radical syndicalist who was infuriated by the military takeover of his of the nation. His Majesty is in critical conditions and doctors are not sure if he will live. Hirohito makes a miraculous recovery, plus 100 political power, or his Majesty is dead. Prince Chichibu will become regent. So Hirohito dies. He becomes leader of the paternal autocrats and the National Populist Party. Why would we want him to die? I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but let's just have him die. It'll be interesting. I mean, it sounds terrible, but let's see what happens. Okay, let's see. It's now Chichibu Yush Yusuhito is our new leader. When the Black Monday recession and general economic and political turmoil threatened the J that Japanese export markets in the Pacific, the government has begun to review its economic policies. We mainly support export raw silk and other consumer goods. Our industrial goods are still inadequate compared with most Western nations. Various measures to remedy the situation have been suggested, and the cabinet planning board, Kakakuin, has been established to study and plan future economic policy. Good. Okay. Nationalization policy. Plus 10% factory output. So we're going to be up with like 30% factory output? On the fundamental pr principles of national structure. On the fundamental pr principles of national structure is a 156 page pamphlet. Thanks you for not making me read that whole thing. Produced by the Ministry of Education to establish an official description of the Kokutai or national structure. It can also be can be translated as national essence, national pol polity, etc. The pamphlet officially enshrines the emperor as a living god, according to the legend of the goddess Amaterasu, and an unbroken line of emperors, Bansikai. 
To serve the Divine Emperor, his subjects are required to cast themselves aside for the social harmony, wa, and for the prosperity of ja Japanese culture. To some extent, the pamphlet is to is a response to criticism of the centralist neo shogunism this is the way we should go forward all right concentrated industry let's get uh so it's still early let's get that more extraction more resources can only be good nationalization policy let's see are we still trading Production, trade, logistics, no. Where's trade? There we go. Surplus of three. So we're still close in surplus of three. Okay. Just making sure we're not getting enough. So nationalize the Zaibatsu or nationalize the aircraft industry. Let's do the, the uh, civilian factories first. Since the Meiji Restoration, in subsequent westernization, the Zabatsu has been the heart of the economic and industrial activity within Japan. They hold great influence over domestic and foreign policy. The Imperial Army has always opposed the Zabatsu's influence and worked for their liquidation. Now that they effectively control the country, the army can nationalize all major Zabatsu and destroy their influence. Right? Man, we have a lot of national spirits. Daily political power, it's black consumption. That'll be very nice in the for our big armies in the uh, East Asian sphere. Especially when we get to like Mongolia and Maklik in the mountains there. And once we've done this and Whoa 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 whoa. The French Republic declared war on the Toreg Confederation. The Popular Front Incident. 446 left-wing academics, intellectuals, and politicians, including two incumbent Diet members, were arrested and indicated under the National Security Act today. All were accused of organizing a popular front and threatening the Kokuzai. Damn Reds. Political power minus 100. Tibet is capitulated. So once we've done the Land Reform Act, which I believe is the one that we're going to do, um, we are definitely going to be doing the the foreign stuff. But let's look at the Tory Confederation. Okay, so this is a. Uh, let's see how many states. Let's see how. Uh, no, I want the Tory Confederation. You have 6 of 11. You have 5 of 9. Oh, so you don't have many troops. Let's see if the Tory Confederation can win this time. Usually the French Empire Republic wins. The French Republic declares war on Guinea. An interesting time to go to war with someone else who has. Two. Okay, I can see why. So that'll be interesting. What is this? Temil Nad Nadu. The puppet. Hmm. Carry task forces. Okay. Let's get the next Navy research. Carry organization even more. That is a lot of carry organization. For our carriers. Speaking of which, Russia announces her ambitions. While many still view Russia as a failed state, torn apart by revolts, disorder, and ineffective rule, and serving as a buffer for middle Europa, recent events have proven something different. The government of the Russian na nation has announced their territorial ambitions, laying claims on almost all of the territory of the former Russian Empire. And it appears they are willing to reconquer the lost land if necessary. Numerous nations in East Europe are already calling their embassies in Russia, recalling, and the world is waiting for Germany's response to this blatant attack on her sphere of influence. Let's see, so you have like, nope, they don't have claims in areas that they used to own. Hmm. Anyway, we'll have to watch out for that. Let's see, let's, what can we produce? We have carriers two, okay. Carry class two. And that will be good until. I mean, they'll be good forever, but let's see. Carrier class until 40? Yeah, 1940. Okay. So we can't do that yet, but soon. Unit of Britain took four states. Ireland was the next. 
So that kind of goes against your policy of uh, separating the uh, separating, but sure. The Fed's cons are in charge. So they took Ireland, which is a pretty it has an interesting national focus tree in this game in a uh, Kaiserreich. The CNT FAI is winning, I believe. Although you do have a lot more troops now. You actually have, might have more. So Carlos might win for once. Okay. We took the... We got all the uh, civilian factories. So now we should be building pretty quick. Yes. And then let's build up after that. Um, so Tokai and Kanto. Okay. And then we'll build up our military factories. Okay. And now let's go and get the nationalize the aircraft industry. The second popular front incident. Additional arrests of intellectuals were made today when 38 left wing professors arrested on charges of organizing a popular front. More reds. Alright. And we need to end this episode here because I've let it go too long already. Uh, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, it really helps the channel, but do whatever you want to do. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.